Greetings, traveler. Once again, it is I, the Reverend Victor S. Johnson, and I've been places you've only read about. And as always, this is my partner, Dudley. Today, I felt it necessary, this being October and all, to do another debunking video, and I don't do many, but when I do, it always seems to be in Delaware. This is the story of the semi-viral video, maybe it's viral now, about the abandoned home of Stephen B. Pennell, known as the Route 40 Killer, Delaware's only known serial killer. Stephen Brian Pennell was born in Bear, Delaware. At the time of his capture, he had a wife and two children, and for all intents and purposes, was known as a working family man, although not without struggles. Now before we continue, I must give a trigger warning at this time and say that while this is about a serial killer, it's not about the killings. This one isn't a true crime, it's a haunted house debunk. That said, thoughts, as always, out with the victims and their families. These women, whose crimes were only being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Pennell was an electrician, and although he was a tradesman, he was having trouble holding a steady job with anyone. To make extra money, he stood in as a bouncer at a nightclub due to his imposing figure, 6 feet 5, 300 pounds. Although he was built like an offensive lineman, friends and neighbors at the time said he was a gentle giant, even playing Santa Claus in the trailer park where they lived. The following is an armchair diagnosis on my part and only speculation. I have nothing official. That said... It is very important that we address mental illness, and as such, if you or someone you know is having a tough time mentally, please seek out a psychologist, psychiatrist, social worker, anyone in the mental health field. I myself have a mental illness, and every two weeks, I do see a therapist. Now let's continue. It's possible that Stephen had a personality disorder. He compartmentalized his life that... According to accounts, he didn't like, and he did this with his killings. It's possible that Stephen did feel remorse for the killings, on account of the fact that he asked for the death penalty. Now with the backstory out of the way, let's play the TikTok video. The abandoned home of serial killer Stephen Brian Pennell. Stephen Pennell was Delaware's only known serial killer who was responsible for the deaths of five women. His tactic was to pick up lonely women near to U.S. Route 40 and offer them somewhere to stay for the night, before killing them with a hammer or strangulation. His home was set up to resemble a loving family home to make his victims feel safe. He would murder them and then dump their bodies and sometimes set them on fire. His own childhood photos and personal effects still remain in the home, his clothes hung up and his car is still in the yard. Locals say they can still hear screams late at night and several mediums have attempted to reach out to whatever is. Still here, but they have successful. Now the house just sits, day after day, with the horrible memories of what took place here. It is unlikely the house will ever be lived in again. A sad end to a sad house. Okay, so a few of the correct things here. The first 10 seconds or so of the video is pretty accurate. He is Delaware's only known serial killer, and Stephen Pinnell did operate on Route 40 in Bear. He's known as the Route 40 killer, the Route 13 killer, or the Corridor killer, because 13 and 40 merge at a point. This is where he picked up his victims. 
That's about where the accuracy ends, though. Now, I can't confirm nor deny, and many videos exploring these abandoned houses on Route 13 also say we can't confirm or deny, but I can't confirm or deny if this was his childhood home. It could very well be. The most confirmation I've seen in any of this stuff, one of these articles said a sheriff and a neighbor told the person that that was Pennell's house. But as we've learned about residents of Delaware, they tend to be fans of the histrionics. Remember, we've got a cult operating under the nose of the DuPont Corporation just about 10 to 15 minutes away. That said, when Stephen Pennell committed his crimes, he didn't live in a house. He lived in a trailer. He didn't own any of the cars that show up in these videos, including this one. He owned a blue Ford van. That blue Ford van, which he was fond of, is where he committed his atrocities. It was blue with blue carpet. It's very clear in a witness statement. He never lured any of his victims back to his house and then did the killings because there was no house to lure them back to. He did all of the killings in this van. It was kind of a Ted Bundy sort of thing. From there, he never buried any of the victims on the property. The victims that were located were actually found in places like the C&D Canal, the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal, and others. There was no home to bury them at. He didn't dress the house up to make it look safer for the victims. Number one, this doesn't look safe to anybody. Number two, he didn't have the intelligence to pull something like that off. He was never playing five-dimensional chess. That's why he was eventually caught and just asked for the death penalty. This was almost bordering on spree, in my opinion. There's no screams coming from this house, and there's no mediums asking to investigate this house mainly just urban explorers who erroneously call this Stephen Pinnell's house. There are many houses in Newcastle County like this, especially on Route 40. But again, Stephen Pinnell lived in a trailer, and with these houses, many of them are now abandoned, and the state simply forgot about them. Likely the sad tale of this house is a case of empty nesters dying and the house not being passed down correctly, it getting stuck in the cracks, or a family abandoning it to escape the mortgage. And once again, the bank and the state just forgetting about it. While urban exploration is cool, not every house is the house of a serial killer. So I hope this was entertaining and informative, Traveler. Once again, I am the Reverend Victor S. Johnson. This is always is my little pal Dudley. Safe travels.